Sideline to sideline, he was a thumper and a leader. He was a captain of the University of Michigan team. Uh, he is Devin Bush. How are you, Devin? I'm good. How you doing? Uh, I'm doing fine. Where Where are you calling in from? What's Where are you? Yeah. Right? Are, are you in Michigan right now for the pro day? Yeah, I'm actually in Ann Arbor right now. Uh, at my place, just you know, kicking it. Just kicking it, getting ready for the pro day uh, on Friday. How does How do you prepare for a pro day, Devin? Walk me through what you've done. Yeah, um, you just kind of just stay in shape. That's the biggest thing. Just stay in shape, and uh, you know, you just got off a of vigorous training for the combine, and you know, depending on when your pro day is. Luckily, mine was so fast, so um, you know, you just get ready to to go out there and do some more drills or do anything that you feel like you need to improve on and, and work at those things the time you get into your pro day. Okay, so is this going to be like your last couple of days on campus before you go elsewhere and get ready, or are you sticking around? Uh, I'm sticking around. I'm just going to uh, base myself out of, out of Ann Arbor and, um, you know, just have that last-minute college experience, you know, with, with my guys and stuff, and you know, just soak it all up because soon enough, you know, I'll be somewhere else. Tell me your favorite Harbaugh story, Devin. Give me your favorite Mr. Jim Harbaugh story that you got. Um, it was one time before a game, the night before, and uh, he was preaching uh, toughness, mental toughness, and just, uh, you know, he brought up the story about how he didn't have any money. And uh, his friend, his parents came and picked him up, and uh, him and his friend are in a car, and, you know, they, they drive off, you know, um, Parents give a suggestion, you know, let's go for ice cream. You know, Coach Harbaugh's like, you know, everybody likes ice cream. Everybody loves ice cream, but I ain't have any money. So uh, as soon as they pulled up to the um, the ice cream place, you know, everybody is, you know, getting ice cream, ordering ice cream, and, you know, parents are like, you know, Jim, do you want ice cream? You know, we, we got you if you don't have any money. He's like, you know, right in there, I had to be tough. You know, I wanted the ice cream so bad, and uh, I didn't have any money. I had to resist it, you know. So uh, he said, he told him no. I'm good. I don't want the ice cream. You know, ice cream's for wimps, ice cream's for the little kids, and I'm, I'm good. Tough enough to, to beat the odds and, and stay strong and, and not take the ice cream. So, you know, he said he was sitting there watching him eat the ice cream, and he's staring at the ice cream, tripping down the cone, and, you know, he's proud of himself because he didn't give in to, you know, getting ice cream. And the point of that is, what's your ice cream, Devin? <laughs> I don't know. It was just, I guess it was the toughest thing, and he was just preaching, you know, how mentally tough he was that day, and you know, he just wanted to relay the message. Okay, Devin Bush, Michigan prospect and consensus All-American 2018 here on the Rich Eisen Show. Where does that ice cream speech relate to the speech you heard in 2016, prior to the Central Florida game, when a specific member of the Michigan alumni base came back and spoke to your team, Devin? Uh, it was. It was just different. It was completely different. Um, yeah, you know when, when Brady walked into the locker room, you know he was just like, you know everybody watches, everybody watches Michigan, you know everybody that came through here, they root for Michigan, they cut on Michigan, and they follow Michigan forever. Mm -hmm. So you're not only playing for today, you're playing for the, the guys in the past and the guys in the future. Well, Devin, I I do deserve this. Um, I don't blame you for bringing up Brady's name, but I was the one who spoke the week before Brady, Devin, to your team. Before. You did. You definitely did. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I was just so mesmerized by Brady. Bro. No, we all are, Devin. We all are. We all are. We all are. It's understandable. It's totally understandable. <laughs> I should have brought my name up. I deserve that. Yeah, you spoke, you spoke to us at practice. I remember that. <laughs> no, you don't. Come on now. It's okay. If I you... swear. You, we, was, we was outside. We was outside. <laughs> That's right. And you came. We outside. You came. You came. And we were probably on like the 20-yard line on the on the on the we're closest to the the grass field. I remember that. <laughs> it's it's also my fault for being sandwiched between Jeter and Charles Woodson and yeah, and, and I Brady. Know, I don't know why you did that to yourself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Timing's everything, yeah. Devin. Timing's everything yeah. in life. Yeah. Oh my <laughs> gosh. All right, I walked right into that one. Hey, what what happened at Michigan State this year, Devin? Walk me through everything that led to you stomping on the on the Spartan logo on the field. What in the world happened in East Lansing? Uh, it was just like, um, obviously it was a rivalry. So, I mean, it was already kind of a lot of tension there. And, uh, you know, they just came and, and they lost arms across the whole field. And, you know, I'm out there warming up. You know, a couple other guys out there warming up. And we got a headphones on. We're not, not really aware of 
what's going on. But, you know, soon enough, we find, we, we look back and, you know, there's the whole Michigan State team and they're walking through the whole field with their arms locked. And, uh, you know, it was just like the matter of disrespect to, to the team. You know, they, they just tried to walk through our whole warm up, you know, walk through the whole field and, and, and to keep their arms locked. They never made a way for us to get through the, their little line or whatever they do. So, I mean, that's kind of what ticked everything off. And then they came, they went to the far side of the field, broke, broke down the huddle, came back and ran through our one again, you know, bumping and talking. So that's where that whole thing came up. So it was just almost like a disrespectful thing. And that's how I took it. So, uh, you know, I wasn't trying to go out there and, and uh, fight before the game because that's, you know, I wouldn't be able to play. I'd probably be, be suspended or whatever. So the next best thing in my eyes was to go scratch up their logo. <laughs> And so, I mean, you did scratch it up. They had it spray painted and everything. And, uh, you know, we're watching right now. You needn't be held back and, and all that. Did you see, was was the coach of Michigan State, was was D'Antonio uh, smiling? Uh, I didn't, I didn't, I've seen him, like, for, like, a, a split moment. And then after that, he kind of, like, vanished. But I did see him out there, though. Mm-hmm. I don't want to relitigate this. Well, actually, I do want to relitigate this. I, I do. You know, I wouldn't mind my, wouldn't mind doing all of that. Were you asked about this at the combine that moment at all? Was that brought up to you? Uh, yeah, I was probably asked probably four times. And what do you think they were trying to determine from you? If you were a hothead or uh, something like that? What, what do you yeah, think? Yeah, I, 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 I guess I guess everybody really wants to know. I think that's what it really was. It was like, yeah, maybe – we only see these hot heads, but we just want to know the story behind it because, I mean, we've never seen anything like that before. So I guess they wanted just to figure out what really so, happened in my eyes. So you just went through – did did we just recreate the combine right there, or what What did you tell yeah, pretty, yeah, people? Yeah, that, that was pretty much the same answer I gave out all hmm. four times. Okay. <laughs> Who did you speak to at the combine? Walk me through that. Um, I, spoke to, I spoke to quite a number of people. Um, I probably ain't – I can't like rip them off the top of my head, but I probably want to say I'm a, I met with most of them. I probably ain't meet with like four or five teams. Okay. Maybe four. Do you want to give me names? Drop names. It's okay. Um, I didn't meet with. I'm trying to think. I didn't meet with uh, Cowboys. Um, I didn't meet with. You did These are teams you did not meet with. Yeah, these are teams I didn't meet with. So all the other teams I've met with. Okay, so um, you really did meet with a whole bunch of teams. Yeah, um, oh. I think that's it. Well, maybe you didn't meet with Tennessee because Vrabel's an Ohio State guy, Devin. Maybe that's what that is. I don't. Yeah, probably. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, what's the strangest question you got asked at the combine? Yeah, so I mean, I, I walk into a room, and uh, there's like, oh, here's our, um, here's our sports psychologist. He wants to ask you a few questions. So I'm like, all right. So the guy's like, yeah, look at me the whole time. I'm like, all right, I will. So then, you know, he's asking me questions, just simple questions. Then he goes to probably like the fifth question. He's like, so um, how long can you hold your eyes open? I'm like, my eyes open? He's like, yeah. I'm like, I don't know. I never really timed myself doing that. So he's like, oh, looks like you kind of don't want to do it. I'm like, I ain't, I ain't never show that, but all right. He's like, you want to try it? I'm like, yeah. So he brought out his phone. He's like, you ready? I'm like, all right, I'm ready. So he's like, ready, set, go. So I'm, I keep my eyes open. The whole time I'm thinking, I'm like, why am I holding my eyes open in a football meeting? Like, we're supposed to be looking at football. We're over here staring at me, keeping my eyes open. So I'm like, all right. So I just kind of like let it go out, let it go out, and I blink. And then I'm like, ah, like, ah, oh, dang, I tried. And he was like, oh, that wasn't so good. I'm like, oh, how long was it? He's like, oh, it was like nine seconds. I'm like, oh, all right. He's like, well, you want to try again? I'm like, no, nah, I don't. <laughs> he was like, he was like, uh, oh, okay, why not? I'm like, my, my eyes are burning. <laughs> I don't know if I can go any longer than that. He was like, okay. And he like wrote something down on this little board. I'm like, all right, whatever. So you you had a staring contest too. We heard about that. Somebody who else had yeah. the staring contest? They said Seattle did that. Was this Seattle that did this with yep. you? Yep, it was Seattle. Wow. Huh. 
Okay, we'll see. We'll see if uh, if you know Seattle's on the clock, and you know <laughs> if uh, if Seattle's on the clock, they'll take you. We'll see how that goes. Yeah, if you're right? if you're twenty first overall, but all the mock drafts I see are your top twenty. What are you hearing? Um, I'm 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 hearing all over the place. I'm hearing top twenty, top fifteen, top ten, late first round. So I, I'm hearing all types of things, and and based off of like the free agency. You know stuff that happened these past couple of days. You know, I, I just feel like the draft is going to be super interesting this year. I think it's going to be a lot of, you know, a lot of wilds, a lot of like head turns, and a lot of questions. But I, I think I'm ready to see how the draft is going to play out because I think it's, it's going to be an interesting year this year with being a lot of decent players too. So it's going to be real cool to see. Yeah, I agree. Last one for you. Your dad won uh, the Super Bowl. Uh, for the Rams, Super Bowl 34, um, uh, with a lot of good friends of mine, Warner and and Marshall Falk. Have you met any of the greatest show on turfers through your dad or, or in contact uh, with them no, throughout this process? I haven't came in contact with them. Uh, he told me stories about them and stuff, just playing with them. But, uh, like, the guys I do, like, the guys I do really know, like, you know, face-to-face face and, you know, speak to them a lot. Uh, I speak to Ron Fletcher. Uh, I speak to Ray Lewis, and I speak to Derek Brooks, who's actually my godfather, so I talk to him. What do you talk to Ray Lewis about? I mean, he is he, he must really download you with a lot of stuff. Maybe, yeah, hey, uh, it looked like you were doing the Ray Lewis dance on the Michigan State logo, I'll be very honest with you, Devin. I, I, pretty... I probably created my own dance right here. <laughs> <laughs> but Ray, that, uh, must, yeah, we, that must be cool. Yeah, yeah definitely. It's just, it's just like a whole like, life thing, you know, with, with – Pretty much all three of them. You know, just making sure you got balance in your life, and you know any questions or concerns I got, or just want to you know, have a nice little conversation. You know, they they chop it up with me. Okay, Devin. Look, this has been a blast chatting with you. Um, good luck to you. Say hi to everybody there in Ann Arbor. Uh, I appreciate you uh, eventually remembering my speech to the team a couple of years ago. Um, <laughs> it's on YouTube if you haven't seen it. Um, so check it out. Got you. I got you. Take care, Devin. Go blue. I appreciate it. Go blue. You bet. That's Devin Bush calling in from Ann Arbor prior to his pro day right here on The Rich Eisen Show. The Rich Eisen Show, weekdays at noon Eastern on Audience.